What's up, friends, and welcome to season 23, can you believe it, of my Battle Brothers playthroughs. This is going to be the final uh, Battle Brothers season where it's vanilla, where it's the base game plus all three of the DLCs. So season 24 and onwards are going to be Legends mod playthroughs, which I look forward to, but we have a lot more to get through before we go over to Legends mod. Excuse me. So, this playthrough... Damage Incorporated. The point of Damage Incorporated is to get over the hurdle we got to at the end in the, in the super late game of the last season, where we played the Peasant Militia, and as great as they were, long live the 13th, once we got to day 365+, plus, we really plateaued quite badly, and because of the backgrounds, you can only, you know, buy uh, Peasants, it's really hard to get elite guys. And I've looked at all the other backgrounds, and I decided I want to try the Trading Caravan background, because... Okay, starting with caravan hands, fine. Let's hopefully get the caravan increased size as soon as we can. That's super useful. But the main thing is trader. So 10% better prices for buying and selling, which should be a 20% income swing or, you know, economic swing both ways. And I think that that's going to be the big difference. I want a, a playthrough where I'm in 300 days plus. And first of all, I want to get my uh, 250,000 gold pieces achievement, which is going to be super difficult. But I want to be in a situation where... I'm stable, and I'm gearing up for the super late game, the, mon the black monolith, the sea of tents, all that stuff, and want money to be no objection. If I come across a sale and there's multiple legendary items, I should be able to buy them on site. And I think that the trading caravan is going to give us the best chance of doing that. So not a warrior is interesting. Start with no renown and gain renown at half the normal rate. It's going to make the early game a little bit harder because it's going to take longer until we are able to start working for the nobility. But I do know that the game's difficulty is a combination of how long, how many days in and your renown. So it could actually affect the difficulty curve in a comparatively nice way. So now I thought of Damage Incorporated because of course I love Metallica. Random late game crisis, random map seed. But what made me settle on Damage Inc. was uh, in the process of putting my guides together, coming soon TM. I've been thinking about what is my ideal 12-man setup. And it'll be a standard 7 up front, 5 at the back. But no fewer than 4 of the front 7 are going to be two-handed Warhammer specialists. And this is on the basis of how we struggled to deal with a lot of heavy armored targets in the last campaign. And how just bonkers good the, um, the Warhammer was that we got. But then that leaves 3 spaces up front. And the three spaces up front are probably going to be torturers, which are Battle Whip and Cleaver users. Uh, let's just decide on a banner. I quite like that one. Never used this one before. Crying Lady, no. Uh, we're not going to be using flails, so that doesn't quite work. This is the most metal of all of the banners, but that's more like a cultist banner. I, I think we'll go for this one, probably. The... Ooh, the, the, the beheaded king. Kind of cool. Hmm. Oh, wait, that's the Bloody Dawn's banner, so I can't use that. Why don't we go for the three swords? That's the 13th Legion's banner. This one we've used before, I don't know with who. That's the War Pigs banner, we can't use that one. Three-headed snake, but just plain wood, that, we haven't used that one before. I'm leaning towards this banner, the because obviously we hate green skins. There's no reason we can't have a northern banner. I mean, once we play the Legends mod, it's going to be a northern house. So why don't we use this Viking sort of inspired damaging corporate? But I like the banners that have a point on the end. Okay, economic veteran, as I've always explained. Please don't judge me. I just think that expert economic amplifies all the the aspects of the game that I don't enjoy. Starting funds, medium veteran economic, expert combat, and no Iron Man Iron Man mode, because in this campaign, the overarching point of it is to rush to the super late game as soon as we can and I'm going to shamelessly save scum 
if we lose a super valuable brother or something very badly goes wrong. And the reason for that is, I hope that I've already proven through my previous campaigns that I am perfectly happy to, to play Iron Man and Honest Man, and I'm not afraid of that. But this is just it's about getting the super late game. Okay. The corpses are abuzz with flies, and Radolf stands amidst the swarm like he built the deathly totem which brought their presence. He turns to you. Greenskins did this one. No man can hew a head in half like that, and no sane man would track them in such a manner. And there's goblin poison on them, arrow tips. Erwin nods. Yesterday we find that merchant hanged by brigands. Now this. The roads are getting too dangerous for a wagon carrying shine. Now I ain't saying my sword hand ain't worth its weight in salt, but with just the two of us on duty we're throwing dice by the hour. Sir, we should look into hiring more guards. We'll hire more guards and then some. Here we go. Shake your head. No. What we'll be doing is fighting back and then some. I aim to hire cell swords to fit a company of making. And if your sword hands want to earn a steady keep, you two can be the first. Onwards now, we have wares to sell. Oh, cool! Look at our icon, how cool is that? So we're starting with only 1,400 crowns. Is that only a two-man roster? Oof. So Radolf is a dastard, but his star distribution is wonderful. Two stars in melee skill. Let me quickly open up my uh, Stobby's build document, which has the spread. The uh, Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's see. Melee skill, two stars, is three per level. That's 30, which would make him 88. Unless I take gifted, and I think I should start taking gifted. What's up, Mazan Mazanaka? If I take gifted, it'll be 33, which will give him uh, 89. That's pretty damn good. Uh, let's see, one star in fatigue. Is gonna put him where? Three and a half on average, so plus 35, that's plus 120. If he's wearing heavy armor, that would be 36 plus 20 is 56. Plus 16 for a Warhammer is 60. It'll get to about 70. That's, that's borderline as to whether or not he'll be able to use heavy armor. But getting anyone with stars in any sort of fatigue is so hard. Yeah, Dastard sucks. But we can remove his wavering at the start of every battle, and eventually... Uh, Dastard will get removed by one of the other backgrounds. So, this is going to be a heavy armor wearing. Oh, hang on, before I do that, I've got to explain what the uh, what our ideal setup is going to look like. We're going to have two-handed Warhammer, open space, two-handed Warhammer, torturer, 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 open space. No, no, hang on. Warhammer, open space, Warhammer, torturer, 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 Warhammer, open space, tor uh, Warhammer. So four two-handed Warhammers and three torturers in the center. The middle one, I might I, I might make a, bar a Bardiche user or a Dagger user for, just for some utility. But, but having four Warhammers and two torturers is, I think, mandatory. What that does mean is we're not going to be able to have any two-handed maces, which is bad against the super big and super scary guys, because we can't daze them. But I'm going to bet on the fact that we're going to have at least two guys who can use a battle whip expertly to disarm the more dangerous targets. And remember, with a Warhammer, you tend to inflict... Um, What's it called again? Uh, staggered. So it makes the enemy that you hit go to the end of the turn order. So you should almost always, after the, you've attacked them once, be attacking before them, which for the two-handed Warhammer guys will help them keep up their reach advantage and will hopefully keep them safe. So that's the seven up front. Warhammer space, Warhammer, torturer, 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 Warhammer space, torturer. Bannerman in the center, flanked by four hybrid archers. They're not going to be pure archers, they're going to be hybrid archers, because I want archers who are actually going to be decent against some of the heavier targets, and we've seen how amazing the heavy throne axes of the Nords are. The hybrid archers are going to have bow mastery and throwing weapon mastery, and they're going to have bullseye, 
So really Bow Mastery and Bullseye is to take care of the enemy archers. And then when they quick hands to the Thrain Mastery with heavy axes, that's going to be for the heavier targets. So that's our normal 12, but then we're going to have four reserves. Uh, one spare two-handed Warhammer in case one of them get injured. One spare Torturer in case one of those three get injured. And two pole arm users. The reason we want four reserves in total is when we have the biggest uh, undead fights like the Black Monolith, I'm not going to want any of the ranged fighters. I'm going to want all melee fighters. And then the four archers will sit out and the four reserves will come in. Two reserves plus pole arm. Uh, okay, our other lad here is more suited to light armor, but he's also going to be a Warhammer user, which is awesome. Uh, light armor... So it's great that we get two of our Warhammer lads right off the start, assuming we can keep them alive. By no means. The name list. Uh, page one of the name list. First name I see, Emmanuel the Third. Welcome, Emmanuel. Next, page two. Oh, he has a nice, good Nordic name. Uh, Gungnir, Gungnir, Gungnir. Head Smasher. Okay, just Gungnir then. I'm assuming the N is silent. Gungnir. some lads oh wonderful a historian right off the bat a historian is so tempting uh, Mizuma you what was the name you submitted I'm really tempted to pick up these historians if, if I get lucky with a historian uh, initiative, resolve, melee defense, no. Ooh, resolve, range skill. This is our bannerman. And if he's if he's a historian, that is incredibly good fortune because you want a historian, and usually I'd be I'd be happy to have a historian um just as a reserve. If he's good enough to be a bannerman, then that's wonderful. Uh, just to warn you guys, if you have already submitted a name, then I won't be adding new ones. Uh, I've got Derpington Price. Um, I just want to give everybody a chance. No, uh, Derp Derp. Add it to the list. Derp Derp, you are 164. Okay, so I'm going to give this dude a try. His stats aren't great. Mm. See, this is the problem. Let's calculate what his resolve will be. Uh, resolve, three stars, four or five, so 45. That will give him, let's call it 80. Plus fortified mind is 20, gives him 100. Uh, it's just that's too low. With range skill, two stars is four. That That's borderline very, very low. He, he would get 44 if I take gifted, which is just... That's, that's, that's bottom of the barrel low. Well, what was the name you submitted, Mizuma? Let me search, let me search the name list. Okay, this is mm, low, but the thing is, like, how much does it cost every day? Ten a day. Yes, okay, so this is our first archer. He's our light armor archer. Although I suspect I'm going to be get, getting rid of him at a later stage. 
Fishermen are usually pretty good a lot of the time. Grave robbers are pretty damn good too. Ooh, I love a good thief. Thieves make excellent tanks. And look look at the, the price difference already. I'm loving the, the money we have. Ozuma, just tell me what name you submitted, dude, and I'll add you. another Gambeson. What is this? An escort? Two thirty six is not bad for tools, but hang on. Let's just take a look at some more of these lads here. It's tempting to just spring for a militiaman, especially because he comes with a bullhook and a set of armor. But he's too expensive. Resolve, melee defense, fatigue. That could be a good, a really good tank. And he'll learn quickly. enough me skill to to be a, a torturer maybe he might do I mean like I enjoy is good the fatigue is amazing tough he's initiative mm. uh, Mazanaka just give me the name now I've got my name list now I'll, I'll, I'll add it for you now I don't know if I want to take this guy. Got a range defense, initiative and hit points. I'm tempted to make him a polearm user because content with being in reserve is pretty good. Considering as a polearm guy, he'll, he'll be in reserve most of the time. But let's pick up this thief. Nice, so at least Wolfram rolled max on his melee skill. So what I'm, you know what, I'm gonna make him a fucking swordsman, why the hell not? Center of the formation swordsman. If I take Gifted with him, he'll roll 28 on average, maybe even more. 28 gets him up to 85, plus a sword is 95 accuracy. He'll be nice and uh, good defensively. Decent fatigue. Hmm. Or he could just be a spear tank and hold the flank. That's probably a much better... Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a light armor wearing spear tank. Next name on the list. Let's try page three. We'll take uh, Volmac. 87. So even though a light armor wearing spear tank is not part of what I described uh, of the setup that I want, that's fine. These spear tanks are amazing at getting you uh, to the later part of the game. And this dude is going to hold down a flank really, really well. Yeah, let's just assign everybody in a second. Okay, so you can hold a flank. Who else goes up front here now? The Wigmar. He's got very nice fatigue. 
56 on melee skill plus one star. That's 28 plus that's 30. That gives him 1890. Uh, I think we make him a torturer just because I want to keep a cultist around, start converting everybody. He doesn't have stars in melee defense. A torturer uses shield expert. So this is a. I'm gonna make him light armor. He 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 could have enough uh, fatigue for heavy armor, but as a torturer carrying a shield, it's just gonna kill his fatigue too much. And then Falk the thief. Is 55 hmm. pretty rubbish this lad I mean he'll have a, a lot of fatigue and a lot of um, initiative he could be decent as an overwhelm using lad I'm gonna make him another torturer But one that I expect I'm going to have to replace. Next page, let's see. Uh, ration, number 139. Uh, how do I spell that? Or... So if you want to submit a name, use exclamation mark Discord. If you're on Twitch, to check a link to my Discord. There's a channel called um, Battle Brothers Name Submissions. I suppose one of you lads might as well use the scimitar. Okay, then we've got to buy pikes for these lads at the back. I need to buy another shield and a full set of armor. We're almost there for our starting setup, but we are certainly going to have to travel to a few other places. Uh, padded circuit is too low. We need to go to a farm and buy a few pitchforks. A few delivery missions would be ideal. Mm, 50 armor is too low. But I think we kind of have to. Daily rate's only 54, so that's good. That's an escort. That's too dangerous. Well, hang on. We haven't even looked at the map yet. Wow, look at how it is dominated by this one house. This house down to the south. House Horn. House Willeberg only has three cities and four. Well, clearly, this is going to be a southern run. We are not going to want to get on the bad side of the southern house. That's for sure. Oh, should have bought that war fork. In fact, I'm still going to. Okay, so we are able to fight now. We're ready to fight. We can't fight, you know, anything big or scary, but... If we get like a little group of thugs, we can do that. I'm gonna have to get at least level three on the lad that I've marked as an archer before we can start doing much of anything.
That dawn would terrorize us. Cheers, gentlemen. Here's to Damage Incorporated. Long, long may we earn money and do well. What's our first fight going to be? Die wolves, three of them. Die wolves are not to be underestimated. Die wolves can quite easily kill these frontline lads. But as long as we maintain a shield wall, uh, then those pitchforks and pikes on the back line. Oh, am I going to be able to get a spear wall down? One, two, three, four, five. These lads can go five. They absolutely would, but as you can see, we don't. We only have the one sword so far. I mean, we 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 one day in. You'll see that I, I do tend to stockpile particular weapons, and we will be stockpiling swords. One, two, three, five. Shit. In fact, we are going to be stockpiling a lot of weapons. We're going to stockpile swords for these die wolves. We are going to stockpile spears for a bunch of enemies. Webnecks, um, Nachtseers huge zombie swarms and then we need at least four battle whips ideally more that's for when you're fighting geists and then with the rework to the alps we're gonna need 12 multiple tile ranged weapons so we're gonna need a combination of whips and pikes that we have 12 in total see Die wolves, man. Scary. Well, so much for a historian. <laughs> he didn't last. <laughs> I, mean, I, I didn't rename him. Well, it's just as well I didn't rename him because he died instantly. And I've got to rename Wigmar and Reshen and Gognir. That lad was not meant for combat. Wait, Wigmar isn't a viewer name, is it? It is not. Okay, next page. Let's try on page one. We'll take Verondox. This stage of the game reminds me very much of um, of early game XCOM 2 where I just accept that brothers are going to die this early on. Ration was not a. And it was. Yeah, Ration is a viewer name. Manuel the Third's a viewer name. Uh, Gungnir is a viewer name. Ulmek is a viewer name, I'm pretty sure. Yep, it is. Rondox. So, is there a reliable way to find whips? No. Um, it's just pure luck. A lot of these newer weapons, like the Bardiche, the three-headed flail, the whip, you do find them in uh, <clears throat> in built-up cities. They just have a much lower spawn rate. Now, unfortunately, it is it's just it's just luck. It's dumb luck. You just have to hope that over the course of a 365-day campaign or longer, you'll find enough. But generally, I'll, I'll try to not fight against. Um, what are they called again? ghosts until I have multiple 
multiple whips. Yeah, I want to buy these because I can make good money off of that. We've been to these three cities. We slowly want to start working towards visiting all the houses because getting more resolve is going to be quite difficult. It's going to take a long time. Uh, allies, first of all. Blankenstadt. We need to get them to like us as much as possible. This is where we're going to make most of our money, I think. Bringing things back to Blankenstadt and selling them here. Shit. Come give me a nice delivery mission. Excellent. Deliver to Faustein, a day to the west. And in the meantime, we'll stop in at every city along the way. How many wolf skins? We picked up two wolf skins. I hope we can get a lot of wolf skins. Oh, okay, so good. There's farmers here. We must come back here. And Fritz the half man. Half man suggests he's going to have tiny. It's actually pretty good for someone on the front line. Makes him harder to hit. A, a tiny torturer can be pretty good because a lot of what the torturer does isn't. Obviously, their damage is really good with the cleavers. But their ability to disarm is what makes him so good. Mm, that's good. We've got to buy all three of these, I reckon. And another cheap brother. I, I love a houndsmaster. I also love a butcher. Although a monk is most likely to give us the bannerman that we actually need. We need a Bannerman and we need ranged fighters. I want to pick up this monk. Okay, he's fatigue, initiative, melee skill. This is an odd one because with two stars, he's going to have three every level. So that's 30, it's plus 33. With gifted. 33 plus 45 once we whip him. 45 through 70, it's too low. Mm. He will have very high initiative though, so he'll have good defense from dodge. He's a candidate for dodge. I think this is a... Pole arm user. He's not great, but I mean, it's great to have a monk around. Pole arms give him plus to hit chance. I mean, he's not a, a bannerman. He doesn't have resolve. is a let's give him light armor because he can then use all that fatigue for, for other stuff remember a lot of these brothers who i'm hiring i know they are garbage brothers but we're going to replace them eventually <clears throat> uh, number 54 on the lame list name list ikri We are very much out of tools now. Yeah, we got four days worth of crowns, six days worth of food. Let's go complete this mission and get paid. Open it, settle. Ooh, good. 
good, good. I have a. F I'm, I don't want to talk too soon, but I have a funny feeling the south is going to be good for us money-wise. I mean, there's a surface copper ore vein there. Wool spinner. Uh. Spun wool. Okay, so that's going to give us cloth. Workshop, so tools should be relatively cheap there. Surface iron ore vein. Amber. More amber. More tools. I'm loving the look of the southern part of this map. And Dawnthol. Hunter's cabins. Awesome. So hunters, we need those. Die maker, so dyes. Like every one of these cities has a luxury good. Dyes, copper, cloth. And they'll all get paid for very well at, at Blankenstadt. So, so far, I'm, I'm quietly confident. All right, we're going to keep our group at six lads until everyone's level five, then we'll hire two more. But it does mean that if we have any kind of money that we feel like is almost spare, we can hire and fire until we find lads that we want to keep and then we'll leave them at level one in reserve until everyone's level five and then bring them in and so on and so forth Nacht says run away uh, more food trading food for more Buying items for less, selling items for more. Less recruits. Come give me another... Uh, back to settle, that's quite tempting. I need another del delivery. Or hunt down what terrorizes. This hunt down what terrorizes, I have a suspicion is going to be those Nocturnes we just saw on the road. Hunt down what terrorizes. Where are the... Tracks. Oof. Yeah, we need help with that, 100%. That's more than we can handle right now. And you'll notice that the... Oh, fuck. The icon of the Nachtzers is the big one, so there's going to be a couple of level 2 and 3s in this. Look at that, even one level 3, that is far too much for us to handle right now. Dylan? Pull these Nocturnes into the road, we'll hopefully find that group of soldiers we saw on the road a little earlier. Just out of curiosity, what is our renown? Unknown. Not surprising. Mark my words, friends. The world will know of Damage Incorporated in due time. Damn, that complicates things. Looks like we're gaining on those soldiers though, so that's good. Trading caravan. It sucks we've had to take so long to do this. Good. Yeah, they are. First Dawnthal. Hello, lads. Oh, 
Oh, you enjoyed the 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 the, the bulwars. It's it's delicious, isn't it? And what did they serve you with it? Did they give you pop with it? Pop in sauce. It's so hard to describe what pop is. The so pop is ground um, cornmeal into like a white. Uh, white substance. Now, how to describe it? It's basically polenta. If you've ever had polenta, then, you, then you've had uh, pop. Chicken breast, lamb chop, butter voice. Oh, lacquer. Lacquer, very nice. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm betting on this night to swallowing one of my lads. I didn't put Rashan's shield up. Because so I'm betting that he's gonna eat someone. If he attacks twice, he could easily kill Rashan. So I hope he's gonna eat. Careful with that fucking crossbow, you... You see? Oh! Hit the shield, thank goodness. You see why I ran this into backup? This would have been so difficult if we had done it ourselves. I think it would have been potentially campaign ending. He could easily have killed Russian there. Lord, that was rough. Shows you we are, we are still very, very small fish in a very big, scary pond. I don't want to talk too soon, but the early signs with respect to fuck's sakes, with respect to how the economy looks is super, super encouraging. Oh my god! I hate that we have to do so much running away. This is just the reality for the first 60 days. Why don't you just try exclamation mark legends, please? I want to see if that uh, command is working. I just added it earlier. Fuck off with the camera. Oh, look at that. They're going to make a fortune off of that. It's a retrograde advance. I like to think of it. Find crypt of Jalfargo, Draftshire, not far to the east. I actually quite like these find the place missions, especially when I have injured lads. Gives them a little time. The Draftshire should be around here. Easy money. I'm actually going to hang around and buy another set of dyes. Hey! 
Deciding that Dornthal is a good place to invest your efforts, you decide to offer the protection of the company and take up any work suitable to your talents. Act like a gentleman in your dealing with the locals, and encourage the men to mind their manners while in the settlement. There was of course some griping at first. Manuel III was sorely disappointed to give up brawling with the farmers, especially with the damage incorporated spending so much time in Dornthal. But you convinced the men that having a friendly base of operations is important in your line of work as it meant getting better prices on the market and more people willing to join you or might be banned. It's also much less tiring not having to dodge the militia all the time. You even enlisted the men to do some small tasks in exchange for nothing but goodwill. I found that little brat who wandered off and dragged him right home. Bashland brags, quickly outvied by I I I Ikri. I went to the market for the old spinster, split her firewood for winter and even put out her washing. But I draw the line at rescuing tree cats. Good lads, bunch of good lads. We're very much a humble band at the moment. These are not inspiring fighters, but just need to get established. 387, I've never been able to buy d uh, dyes for that cheap. Lads, we are going to make a fucking fortune. <laughs> yeah. Oof. They only torture evil people. Oh yeah, so earlier I mentioned about the weapon stockpiling and I said that we are going to get a combination of 12 weapons that can attack over one tile. Uh, Tome of Arcane Knowledge. Uh, this is probably too hard. I need to repair my armor first, which means I'm going to have to sell these dyes first. Uh, the reason being is that we need to be able to fight Alps. So with the way that Alps have been reworked, as soon as... So the Alps surround you at the start of the combat, one square away from all of your lads. As soon as you damage one, then they all shuffle around, but they stay where they are. Unless you move up into melee contact and you attack one then that one and all the other Alps then respawn all one circle away. So if you keep chasing them and hitting them, they keep spanning, expanding outwards and outwards and you end up being able to hit like one or two of them per turn and it's really friggin' difficult. Whereas if you give everybody whips and pikes and you just form a tight band, you can attack them, they shuffle around but they don't go any further away and all 12 of your brothers can attack all of them every single turn. They just keep shuffling around. Hunt down with terror. This is good pay, and we can drag this into some reinforcements on the road. Uh, the other good thing about uh, that tactic <clears throat> is that you can wake up. The brothers can wake each other up quite easily because they stick together so much. So all in all... Uh, a few hands, a caravan guard, and a f dire wolves. I reckon with that trading caravan we can take them on. A battle standard. We'll do a battle standard next. There's one caravan guard and two to three caravan hands. So the problem is cut much melee defense, but 14. If we spread the boys out, then hopefully those caravan hands will come in between us. I need these caravan hands to come forward. I don't know if they are go if they just stand there, we're going to have real problems. I expect I'll move forward. You know what? I can't trust them to move forward. So what I'm going to... Okay, they are moving forward. Nice. I go here. Then that caravan guard should hold the southern part of the flank. <laughs> Come on, Russian. 
Shit! Russian's in huge trouble. Outstanding, Fomac. Oh, thank goodness that Dowulf went north. Nice! Yes, damage incorporated. Doing it, boys. I'm doing it. should be the third wolf pelt so we can now make a armor attachment and we got a precious level up six hundred and ninety churching Okay, full mac, uh, melee skill, melee defense, and your resolve needs to get increased pronto. As a torturer, we mustn't neglect your melee defense. Mm, fast adaptation as a torturer. Let me consult my build. Jailbreaker, Raider Lad, Dagger Lad. Well, Torturer slash Dagger Lad. Fast adaptation, student recover, Dagger slash Cleaver. Oh no, here we go. Fast adaptation. Gifted, rotation, student, recover. Shield spec, nimble. Colossus, berserker, and steel brow. Good tonight. Will you come mm. with me to Camelot and join? Thanks to the resub, the to jump to support the lads. Uh, Detective Chimp, did you submit a name for the name list? Anyway, uh, considering he doesn't have stars, he, he, he is going to need fast adaptation. Besides, these are all lads I'm going to be replace, replacing eventually anyway, so... Well, if you'd like, give me a name, I'll add it to the list, and you might make it in eventually. The Rondox fast adaptation. Plus one hurts me, that's fucking terrible. making our way back to Blankenstadt because when we actually sell <clears throat> our wares they make nice nice profit Five oh six. 506 that's look at that that is a clear hundred gold profit four sixty two Oh baby, 190 gold profit on those dies. And a good 67 profit, a little bit more. Excellent, yes. Bobo. Oh, 
I'm hoping this campaign doesn't actually last too long. I am keen to try the Legends mod, but let's not forget, we're probably going to need at least like 400-ish days in, in game, which is at least 80 hours in game. If we do four hours a day, f at least for the next two weeks, it's f uh, four times it's 20 hours a week. But I won't do that every day. It's two months at least, probably more. Uh, Dawnthal, three days to the west. This is the one city where I won't accept that mission because I may very well have to abandon that. And I cannot afford to piss off Blankenstadt. Listening Heights to the West. Well, hang on, I need to update the map seed command. So, thank you for pointing that out. Edit. A Q I X E H. J. Okay, good. That's the new one there. While well, taking inventory, Ikri has a little too much to drink. Get the whip. You drunkard. That'll teach him. Time to head back. And that's very doable. Once we are at level three with all the lads. head down to Krumvada and see if we can't pick up some some cheap amber and down with terrorizers what's gonna be this time Weapon X. <laughs> we'll see, Mopperus. <laughs> we'll see. I hope not. I quite like the look of the the trading caravan, just because of the economics. Already, the economics has proven to be pretty damn good. Now, Phil Mac, is there any chance that you can get up there and still get a spear wall down? Legend. The restriction of the trade caravan is that you get... No, actually, you get a, a straight 10% cheaper prices... 10% cheaper to buy and you, you get 10% more. So it's a straight, it's like a 20% income swing, which is amazing. The downside is that you gain renown at half the rate. So it's going to take a lot longer to be able to do noble contracts. But at the same time, that could actually slow down the increase of the difficulty curve. Fuck's sakes, boys! Oh, dodgers, clutch, clutch dodgers. Fuck that! Finally. Hmm. 
So Shinri, the the difficulty of the game in terms of the numbers of enemies and type of enemies is a combination of your renown and how many days into the campaign you are. So theoretically, the acceleration of tougher enemies should be a little bit slower. I may well be wrong. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they just changed the way it's coded just to not make it easier. But my understanding is that it should should be a little bit easier. That progression should be a bit slower. Oh, this is wonderful. It's also cheap. Wonder love it. Beautiful. Okay, so as a Warhammer user, company gear and level are factored in as well. Okay, makes sense. My name, where is my builds? Stop crashing Microsoft, you useless piece of shit. What's the matter with you? There it is. Okay, tanky lad, raider lad. Student, adrenaline, rotation. I'm actually going to stop taking adrenaline on my two-handed guys. I found that when I have adrenaline and indomitable, I only end up using one of the two of them. And I really, I'm really only using adrenaline on that first turn that I step up. Doesn't feel worth it. Now, I know overall that there is some way that you can combine adrenaline, indomitable, and recover to get infinite fatigue, but from how I understand how that works, you then can't attack. All you can do is recover and use adrenaline the whole time. So I think I'm going to swap out Adrenaline for Gifted, just for the flat stats, because Gifted is just so good. Like just just mathematically, the, the argument for, for for gifted is pretty amazing. So, assuming you take me skill for plus three, fatigue for plus four, and either hit points or me defense. If the stat was just called get eleven stat points, you'd think that's amazing. Like I've started shying away from Colossus a lot of the time as well because Colossus just turns out to be a given to a brother who has 60 hit points you then get given colossus that takes him up to 75 so it makes me wonder if that skill wasn't called what it was if it was called give plus plus 15 hit points wouldn't take it as much it depends though i'm not a huge fan of stacking hit points it does it does scale very well with nimble and i do take nimble quite a lot but the thing is then you still have to keep pouring uh, level up points into into plus hit points. Which means then you're not putting those points into either fatigue or melee defense. So it's as everything it's a balancing act. Quickly, give me my ambition. Oh, there's the Generally I I much prefer having a build where I prevent getting hit rather than lowering the amount of damage I take when I do get hit. Oh, delivery, perfect. Gas dead. And it just so happens I want to go north. I need to go visit the other cities. What are we carrying? We are carrying no trade goods. I 
things I love about Battle Brothers, but at the same time, it's frustrating with viewers constantly saying, you should take this perk, this perk is the best. But at the end of the day, no one perk is objectively better than any other perk. It's just, it entirely depends on how you use them, I mean. And you're, if, if you take a certain amount or certain perks, should we mop up the survivors? No. It's all contextual. But for me, one of the big surprises and what really opened my eyes in the last campaign was the effectiveness of melee defense stacking tanks. I think I, I tended to overvalue, this is more of an early game thing, but I tended to overvalue melee skill. Obviously, it is the most important skill for frontline guys because you have to actually be able to hit what you're swinging at. But it's kind of amazing how many fights I've had where like a super scary like orc warlord or a veteran uh, bandit leader or something. Like I, I need time to kill all of his mates while with him. And then you just put him in contact with your tank who shield walls up and as long as that unit doesn't have an axe you just keep him busy while you kill everybody else. And then you dagger down that height. Oh, come on, move man. Don't tell me we surround it. Don't tell me we fucking surround it. Come on. Oh, for fuck's sake. The disaster. Yeah, we gotta punch our way down south now. This is fucking disaster. Let's get out of there. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, we gotta sacrifice someone, unfortunately. Like, why the fuck can't I get through there? Oh, because I came down from the height. Rip for Rondox, I'm afraid. To running away, then no one better th better at that than me. That lad will catch him there. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think Verondox is gonna get caught either way. He's gonna have to make a few dodges at height disadvantage. It's a pity this guy isn't carrying a shield because he's gonna be able to. Act in six turns, act in seven turns. Yes! Verondox gets to go first. I would like to play my Brave Sir Robin running away music, but then it gets copyright claimed instantly. Yeah, 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 fuck you. Run away! Oh my god, please tell me we're gonna get away with this. this. This is some quality running away. Can you fuck off, mate? 50% chance. It just shows you how lethal... He's a poacher. He's, he's not even a marksman. Oh, it's zero range defense. Yeah, I don't want to press retreat yet because the AI is so stupid. It'll start making us run in weird circles. This is the, the point now where this poacher is going to finish off Gungnir.
Fucking run away, lads, for God's sake! Pierced leg muscles, arm muscles. Oh, sorry, dude, you are just gonna have to heal naturally. Guessed it. Archers, dude. Archers are the worst. Marksmen are the worst. Oh god, we're in barbarian country now. We're not ready to be in barbarian country. We definitely do need to be here. Farm up their throwing weapons, but they are lethal right now. 3,000 crowns. Yeah! No one likes a skin flint, at least of all a group of wandering, bloodthirsty rabble motivated primarily by a love of coin. Not everyone, or more precisely no one, was thrilled when you suggested cutting back on spending to save up for a company standard. Once the damage incorporated standard is finally paid for and hoisted for the first time to proudly snap in a fresh dawn breeze, however, no one claims it wasn't worth it. I mean, are proud of their new standard, even tossing around names for it around the campfire, though none of them really stick. It's clear for everyone to see now, this is not some band of hired thugs. This is becoming a true mercenary company. Who should have the honor of carrying the standard? Whoever on the back line has the highest melee skill. Manuel. Let's hire another brother, just so that our injured lad can have some time off. Oh, a cheap wild man. I will always hire cheap wild men on site. Let's hope his star distribution is really good. Okay, dumb is typical for a wild man, but this is a torturer right here. Loads of fatigue, loads of hit points. Nice melee skill. Doesn't have great initiative. Torturer. Onto the name list. Uh, page three on the name list. Paragon. And at 53 base, he didn't roll too badly. I think that rolled from 42. I love a good wild man. Especially because we have a, a monk to keep him under control. There are some really good lads here. Okay, Dextrous is nice, but no. No. Nope. Uh, that's pretty good. Melee skill, melee defense. Fragile is terrible, though. Fifty-two and two. That's low enough for another light Warhammer user. What's up, Crystalon? We had what last page three. Let's go page four. Neeks. the partner and then because I want to keep track of who's who 
on my builds i've actually got the list of all the lads that i want so going from the front line to the left to the right hammer raider hammer raider torturers hammer raiders archers bannermen pole arms okay so full mac is a reserve tank that means full mac is number 16. We've got Verandox, who's one, the first torturer, which is number three. This just helps me keep track of, of who's who. And also when to stop hiring lads. Russians, another torturer, that's four. Polarm user, that's 13. Manuel the third, another one, he's one of my two good Warhammer lads. But my war, my guys labeled Warhammer won't actually go onto the front line using a Warhammer until they level 11. It's just too dangerous and they're too valuable. Uh, we'll like before then I might chuck him on the front line if I can give him a shield uh, Paragon So at this point I've got all the torturers I need Nix the partner another Warhammer user. Wait a second. I should have. A Gungnia, who's number two. Meeks, the partner, is number six. And so then when I'm looking to hire lads, I look at my list and I see, okay, cool. Positions one to six are filled. So I know that I, currently I need four archers, a bannerman, a hammer raider, a pole arm and a spare hammer raider. So we have a long way to go still, unsurprisingly. Prices here are pretty pants. Mm, a kit on caps? No. Too expensive. And the game's crashed. God damn it. Ugh. Let's hope there was an auto save. Okay, an hour and twenty, so that's as good a time as any to take a little break. Damn it.